to begin. We're going to begin the meeting. Madam Secretary, prepared uh, to take the the minutes. Wait, hold on, I'm trying. Okay, thank you, I was trying to on mute. Yeah, I'm here, thank you. Oh. All right, thank you very much. All right, uh, we are now calling the meeting to order. The time is now 7.06 p.m. Uh, I wanna welcome everyone to um, the executive committee meeting, the last one for 2022. Um, and for the record, uh, my name is Fred Baptiste. I currently serve as chair of CB9. And this is our executive committee where we will set the agenda for um, the December meeting, uh, which will be happening this week on Thursday. Um, okay, so for the record, um, all right, so I am present. First Vice Chair Warren, you're present, please. So you're here for the record. Yes, Warren? I am. Yes, I am. Okay. Uh, is Fran on the line? I didn't see Fran. I didn't see her. Okay. No, I just, I just, I just texted her. Okay. All right. So we'll come back. So if she, when she joins, we'll be able to add it to the attendance. Um, okay. I see the secretary's here, Linda. Yeah. Thank you. I see you. our treasurer is here, Chris. We have the members at large. Is either Nicholas or Kyrie on? I don't hear them. So I have myself, Warren, Linda, and Chris. We have four members present, so we have quorum. Uh, I wanna thank everyone for coming again this evening. We're going to try and be expeditious. I definitely wanna make sure that we're speeding up the meeting, speeding up the tempo and getting the business done in a more timely manner. Um, let's move on to the next item. Uh, Dante, do we have anyone who signed up for, uh, for public commentary? No, not for executive now. Okay. All right. Uh, we will move on in the agenda then. We will continue on. Uh, at this time, we will go to committee reports. All right. I would just ask, so in the interest of time, we're going to do something different. Uh, I've heard the cries of the people. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to take the committee reports. I would ask all the chairs, please give brief summaries, two minutes or less. Okay. Uh, if necessary, we will take brief questions. We're not going to do uh, an extensive uh, Q&A. A couple of questions if necessary, if there's anything that we need to get clear. Um, after we conclude the committee reports, unless you have an action item, you know, the chairs will be free to go. Uh, we definitely understand that you do not have a vote, so it doesn't necessarily make sense. We would just ask that you be as informative as possible during your committee reports. After that, you'll be able to go and then the officers will stay and be able to create the agenda for this Thursday's meeting. Uh, the district manager's report and my report will be duplicated. So we give it here, but we will also give it during the general board meeting. So you'll have that opportunity as well to get those, um, those board-wide, district-wide reports. Okay, so with uh, no further ado, we will now go into committee reports. And just to show you, I'm shaking things up. Uh, Ms. Moses, I see you on. Oh man, I get to go first. That's great. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Okay, um, our meeting um, was held on um, December 6th. Um, so, on the old business, the City of Yes Text Amendment Subcommittee, um, they have not met, but they will be meeting in January 2023. Um, I, there's nothing really to report except for, I'm still waiting um, for, I, I guess for you, Fred, to um, send out a letter to the person that had non-attendance, which is Rashida Sykes. So I, she's, still, she's still present on my attendance until you send out a letter or something acknowledging that she's no longer on our ULUB committee. Okay, uh, no, she, she, she is removed from your committee. Um, I'll tell you what, just for documentation purposes, just send me a, an email uh, requesting that she be removed. I'll respond to that, that will make it official, but she's going to be reassigned. Okay, oh. so for, for your January meeting, she will not be a member. Okay, so she is, removed then. She's removed. Okay. Um, our committee also asked, could we get a replacement for her? 
that we will have to decide. If we could talk about that offline, only because I just want to make sure we keep the meeting moving. Um, we'll have to have a conversation out, and we'll have to talk about who, you know, what the assignments are. But if we can do that offline, we'll take care of that. We'll see if that's possible later. Okay, and um, just to make it short, uh, we our uh, minutes have been submitted into the office, so everybody can read, and that's about it. Okay, thank you very much, Pat. Uh, we can take a couple of questions too for the Euler Chair. Are there any questions? Okay, hearing none. Thank you very much, Ms. Moses. Appreciate it. Um, okay, so let's see. Going down the line, I do see the housing chair. Beverly, are you there? Beverly? Ms. Newsom? Um, she yes, yeah, she will. Yes, and she's on mute also. Beverly, your microphone looks to be unmuted, but we can't hear your audio. Hear me now? Yes. Got you now. Okay. Um, housing didn't hold a meeting in um um December. Our next meeting will be in January. Understood. Okay, thank you very much for that. You're welcome. Uh, all right, uh, okay, so we will move on. I see uh, the Chair for Environmental Protection. Debbie, you there? Hi, good evening. Good evening. Good evening. So we had a meeting uh, the first Thursday of December. Um, we pretty much had, had an open discussion and it was quite interesting that we did have two residents from the community attend the meeting to bring some information about some challenges they're facing with their homes in terms of water problems when it rains heavily, the leaves, the trees that are being planted. So I believe that the information was already provided to CB9. However, I did allow them an opportunity to um, bring us as a committee up to date on what their concerns were. So hopefully we can um, follow up with uh, Dante to find out what, you know, the status is of, you know, those uh, concerns, which is pretty much, as I mentioned to them, I think it is community wide because I remember being out there about a month ago coming in from the supermarket. And I mean, water was coming from everywhere. And I mean, it rained that day, but I mean, the amount of water that accumulated, I mean, I couldn't, I mean, I was jumping over water on um, East New York Avenue over there, coming back to what's Rogers. And I'm like, what is going on here? So I can understand where they're coming from, but I think one of the uh, residents, his concern is bigger than you know, no, you know, just having the water. I think there, there were, you know, changes made over there to, you know, the drainage system and all these things. So maybe there needs to be a conversation in terms of whether that can be resolved so that he doesn't have to be sitting in his house every time it rains. And um, in addition to that, you know, we talked about, you know, different things that um, we want, we will be working on as a committee in terms of, you know, the um, community and, you know, the garbage uh, situation. And, you know, so, you know, in the new year, we hope to be doing some stuff and, you know, working alongside, you know, the uh, community board to bring those things to fruition. And that's my report for tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Debbie. Question. Um, okay, hold on. Just see, uh, Ms. Westerdahl, go ahead. I see you have a hand up. Uh, I just wanted to add that we, I'm on the EP committee co chairing with Debbie, that we have um, four people that have never attended a meeting. Or, and I, I think we've made notes to you. So, what's going to happen there? Right. So I'll discuss a little bit during my um, my report, but the district office is already compiling that uh, attendance is one of the topics that I do have on my agenda. So all those issues are going to be addressed. Yes, uh, so because I did send that information up, yes. to Dante as well. So, yeah, 
So we're yeah, doing the holistic. Funny. So we're looking at yeah. committees, but we're also looking at board attendance in general. So, but I'll talk a little bit about that when we get to to that section yeah, of the agenda. It, it makes it impossible for you know it's hard for us to get a quorum when there's four people. Yeah. No, du duly noted. No, no, absolutely, absolutely understood. Um, and, and it's something that's very critical. You know, we've always stressed that the committees are, are really what drives this. So if you can't function, it's a serious issue, and we're going to address that. So that'll be happening in the next over the next couple of weeks. Okay. Um, yeah. So Debbie, I, the one quick question I had is: so for the the, the residents who came uh, to the committee, I'm happy that they, they you know. They, you know, they were able to come and you were able to, 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 to address their issues as well. Do they have their specific issues where they lodged with the district office? Yes, they did. They spoke with uh, what Khalid, Khalid was on the meeting that night, but they okay. also provided um, information to the board office. I think Dante is aware. Okay, so, no, no, yeah. perfect then. Okay, so yeah. the office will take care of that, I'm sure. Yes. Uh, all right, Yunella, we will take a quick one and then we're gonna move on. Yes, just a quick one, uh, Debbie. Um, just following up uh, with the, the the rat population, you know, running amok in Brooklyn. Is there anything that um, your committee is working on, or anything that we could um, work together on regarding that? Um, I live in a um, multi dwelling, and the 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 building next to me is now vacant, and um, there are hordes over there. Okay, so again, that's another issue that is community wide and I think needs to be addressed at the district service cabinet meeting. I believe that Dante is aware of that as well. Okay, thank you. So, yeah, you're welcome. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Debbie. Um, we are now going to move on. Uh, let me see. I see the public safety chair. Primo, you still there? Of course, I'll never leave. <laughs> um, good evening, everyone. Uh, so the kind of stated mission of our committee this year was to extend beyond um, simply liquor licenses and to move into the territory of addressing public safety via the NYPD and the FDNY. And so uh, for our last two meetings, we've had the NYPD uh, present to give us reports this month. Sergeant Barada attended, um, he shared with us some overall crime statistics for the district. Um, crime is up significantly from 2021, but I think notably 2021 was the lowest year for crime across the city in recorded history. Uh, so we're seeing 30% increases in most crimes. Um, the one category and what there's seven major categories for crime they are all up with the exception of one which is shooting victims uh very significant increases in grand larceny bur burglaries um and robberies i would say that like the two major crimes that we talked about that have taken a significant increase in the current year are check washing um which is when you take a check out of the mail and you rinse it in a chemical solution, and then you rewrite the check um, to yourself. And so um, that has been happening a lot. You may ask yourself, how are they getting these checks out of these mailboxes with the little slots? And the answer is that it seems like somebody has stolen some keys from um, UPS, USPS rather. And so um, use, in, use permanent ink for your checks, um, especially for money orders. Um, banks are likely to refund your money. Money order companies are not. Uh, so I think that's like a warning that should go out to the larger community. And then robberies and, and home burglaries are up significantly. Just kind of close your windows, especially on fire escapes. Um, we are also going to be hosting an event on Saturday, December 7th with the FDNY. It will be hosted at Tivoli Towers. Um, we are waiting on the community board staff to put together a flyer for us, which I'm sure will be coming soon. And then we will circulate it to the larger community. We would appreciate, of course, having um, presence from the community board as well. Uh, we're kind of being held accountable to a minimum of 25 people. Our committee will be there. Beverly, we'd love to have it circulated amongst the community at Jackie Robinson. Um, and the idea here is to increase fire safety and awareness as we enter these cold, cold months because there have been a significant uptick in fires as well. And so that kind of concludes FDNY and NYPD. And then as we move into 
Liquor licenses, there were two that were brought in front of the committee this month. Um, those two are Fiona's, which is a bar on Flatbush Avenue, which y'all should be familiar with. It's kind of on the corner where Irv's used to be. Um, that should be a relatively straightforward approval. It's a renewal. There has been nothing of note happening at that location. The second one is a bit more complex. It's for the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens, which has a new vendor. Uh, so they used to work with a restaurant group called Patina. It has been replaced with what we can refer to as Union Square Hospitality, which is the restaurant group run by Danny Meyer, uh, Shake Shack people. Um, and so they're applying for a liquor license. They're also gonna be hiring 34 people to work. And our committee was really interested in making sure that of that large group of people that they'll be hiring, that they are committed to hiring significantly from our local community. And so we've been pushing their council to basically put together a letter expressing how they are going to be hiring from the local community. And um, our approval is essentially contingent on that letter being provided. Um, and so we're going back and forth on that a little bit at the moment. So I'd say that's the report for the committee. Any questions? Yeah. Could you repeat the name of the first one, Primo? Of the first, the first liquor license? Uh -huh. It is Fiona's, F-I-O-N-A apostrophe S. Oh, okay. Sounds familiar. Okay. And what kind of license is that? Is it a full license or a license? It's a proper bar. Yeah. And it's okay, a renewal. Nice. And they have they have 4 a.m. hours, which is late, but it's flatbush and they typically close at 2 a.m. Um, and it's a renewal. Okay. And for the BBG for Union Square Hospitality. So you said full, full license. Um they submitted incorrect hours the first time and so have um, amended their hours to go until, I believe, 12 p.m. But, you know, it's indoor. It's at the premises of the Brooklyn Botanic Gardens, if you're familiar with kind of like they host weddings and stuff. So they need a license that goes until at least 12 for the weddings. Okay. Were there any other stipulations or anything you needed them to add or is it pretty, you know, no, no other stipulations. Um, the, just so you know, like they've provided a letter so far. Sorry, there's like a truck going by my house. They provided a letter so far, basically like expressing that the people who worked for Patina have been kind of like offered jobs and job interviews with the current group. So kind of trying to ensure us that there's not going to be a lot of turnover, but they've balked quite a bit at making a commitment to hire from the local community. Uh, and so that's where we're pushing them a bit further. Yeah. Well, so are we prepared to? We're going to see where they are on Thursday. Um, they've been responsive so far. So the meeting was on last Thursday. Um, and then on Sunday, they provided a letter um, stating or an email stating their intent. We asked them to turn it into a letter today. They turned it into a letter. Uh, so they're moving quickly. It just seems like um, they need to, to have some internal conversations about making either a commitment or at least some sort of goal of the percentage of new jobs that they're looking to hire from the local community. And so we've asked them that as of a few hours ago. Um, and, you know, either we'll present their letter as is on Thursday and see if it meets the, you know, satisfaction of the community board. Um, and perhaps they'll amend it to provide a goal or a target percentage of jobs that they're looking to hire from the local community. Okay. So, so administratively, we'll probably end up putting them on the agenda. We're going to wait for them to probably yes. your report, let us know if they're going to be considered for that meeting or if it's going to be held off until next month. Yeah. I would, I would say let's add them to the, let's add them to the agenda for now. Yeah. Fair enough. Okay, are there any other questions for the, we can take a couple of questions for the public safety chair. Well, once. I'll take a little clap. Uh, one thing I wanted to, uh, to mention as well, um, to just a, a point of conversation that seems to be rising is around um, the marijuana license, marijuana licensing process, as well as the um, storefronts that are popping up all around the community that are, advertising themselves as marijuana shops without licensing actually being off the ground. And for those of you who are like involved in the community and like are around, like the corner stores are all selling weed. The smoke shops are all selling weed. Um, 
they're not licensed yet. It's happening. Um, and there's an increasing amount of advertising essentially for that particular avenue. We seem to be focused currently as a community on the places that are advertising, but everybody's doing it. Um, all the bodegas are selling weed. Um, so if you, if you don't know now, you know. Um, Patricia Moses, uh, is he other hand raised? Uh, yes. Um, you know, in terms of like the job postings, like I'm always hearing that there's going to be jobs for <laughs> people in the community, but I never see anything posted. So I don't understand how it's going to be jobs and there's never anything posted. Absolutely. Shouldn't it come through? Shouldn't it come through our community board so that it could be posted so that people could apply for it online? Yeah, I'd say, uh, Patricia, I totally agree with you. And it's something that we, uh, or Pat, uh, it's something that we're, 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 we're going to push a bit more from the public safety committee's perspective. Um, so what has been described to us in the letter so far is that they are posting jobs and doing job fairs in the local community. I haven't seen them. You might ask for links to those job fairs and to those job postings. Um, and that's like a reasonable next step potentially. I'm so sorry for the background noise. There's a truck idling on the street. Yeah, what, what I'm basically asking is that when you meet with them, um, can you maybe ask them to send it into our office so that it can also be posted through our district office? And that way we'll know that it is actually being done. Thank you. Along, along those lines, uh, and I just want to think it through as well. And Dante, we probably, we probably need to, to loop you in on that conversation. Because part of the thing is they're probably not going to give us the posting before they get a liquor license and they get approved and everything else. But then the key is how do we make sure that they comply with that? Because they've already gotten licensed at that point. So how do yeah. we ensure compliance in terms of, yeah, we're getting the links that we're able to post. And I mean, um, the other thing is for like for like a group like Union Square, like it's not all it's not all liquor jobs, right? Like they're hiring dishwashers, they're hiring cooks for the kitchen, they're hiring maintenance people. Like they're taking over the, the operation of the cafe at Brooklyn Botanic Garden as well. And so like, yeah, maybe 10 or 10 or maybe 10 of those jobs of 34 are like folks who are bartenders, that kind of thing. But we're looking at 20 plus jobs that are not reliant on a liquor license, just to name it. But I think you're, you're right, Fred, for like the other spots like a bar, yeah. Okay. Right. I was just saying, yeah, I was just saying anywhere because anything I feel that's in our community, if we have direct uh, contact with these people, we can say, can you send it in? I mean, because, you know, sometimes jobs, even when you sometimes jobs, you don't get hired until like maybe four months later or whatever. However, mm -hmm. they got a cutoff date for people to apply. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. Heard, understood and agreed. Okay, Debbie, we'll hear your question and then we're gonna have to move on. I don't have a question. I just wanted to tell uh, Primo that it's it's walking advertisement. I've seen it on the street. Guys standing on the corner with their little tables and bags. So it's all over. Yeah, not only in the bodegas. Oh, you're talking about the, the marijuana. I thought you were talking yeah. about the, the job the job application. No, but, no. Yeah, that's what's yeah. Right. <laughs> I was like, are you gonna get a job on the corner? Um <laughs> no, I, I hear you, Debbie. It uh, I see it everywhere. And I think everywhere, yeah. We're walking this fine line right now as a city trying to figure out what it looks like. And there's policing coming from lots of different places, but the reality is it's legal to smoke weed in New York right now. And um, you know, we're all finding our way towards what that looks like, you know. Okay, and, and I'll have a couple of comments about that during my report as well, um, but it is something we definitely need to tackle and Primo, we will probably be speaking offline about that as well, because I'd like for your committee to take that up as a conversation. Thanks, Fred. Okay, all right. Um, okay, I see Soul, you services. Hi, everybody. Um, thank you for calling on me next, because I'm at another meeting. <laughs> trying to do everything at the same time. Um, so just wanted to give my update. Um, this past Saturday, December 10th, we partnered and did the youth serve the youth summit. And um, a couple of the uh, members from youth service committee did volunteer packing bags and doing things to support the event. Um, the turnout wasn't that great um, in terms of the kids, but you know, it still was a good um, summit. 
good discussions, good um, vision boarding and all types of activities that we had that was going on there. And so my thoughts is, you know, in thinking about this for the future, strategizing multiple ways to get more um, participation from the youth and then having it that they can attach it to particular programs that will bring an adult that will bring a youth so then you can increase the participation. So, you know, having more strategies around that. But I'm thinking, you know, I wanted to be able to be a part of this so that if we as a committee want to do something like this next year, you know, I was a part of the planning and I can, you know, see some of the strategies and things that they used this year to bring into what we can do for the future. Um, what we have coming up is a couple we had. So for our past meeting um, last week, we had two speakers, a former principal, and he was also principal supervisor in the superintendent office, Mr. Carlson Gray, and Evadene um, Hall was also there, who is a humanologist and had a book called um, Suicide is a Killer. And, you know, she talked about different things that we should look at with our young people and paying attention and how we can be of support of them in the community. Um, Mr. Gray also talked about, you know, educationally and the thing that, you know, a lot of kids their age, of course, are looking for jobs and internships and how, what can we do to help them to be more prepared and be of support with them as a community also. So it was a good meeting. Um, we did have quorum and we also voted in Cynthia, who will be the official um, secretary for our group. Moving forward, what we are focusing on coming up now is the job and internship fair and the family fun day. So those are gonna be some of our major focuses for the spring. Um, and I was able to secure the commissioner, Keith Howard and um, oh, a Andrew Danta, you remember the other, his last name, I can't remember is he's a number one of the deputy commissioners of DYCD have committed to um, be a speaker in March on our March meeting and for February, I'm working to secure um, Superintendent Michael Prayer. So Superintendent Lindsay committed, but then said that she felt as though because most of the population she works with is elementary and middle school, she's connecting me with Michael Prayer because he's with high schools and is with more connected with um, our age community. So I'm working to have him be a speaker for February and for January, mostly going over um, discussing like the different things that different people on the committee can, can do in terms of us putting together the budget and the actual fair, what we can do together, and then connecting then with the community board at large um, for our two major um, events. Okay. Thank you so, very much. So our March, our March speaker, what's, remind mm -hmm. me his name. Um, Keith Howard, he's the commissioner right, Keith, for department, right, yes. yeah, department mm -hmm. of youth and community development gotcha. and his, one of his deputies and I know it's Andrew, but I can't remember his last name right now. I'm to, I'm Andrew sorry. was in my mind. Yes, I'll, I'll get <laughs> back to you. Um, okay. I know that I'm, I had sent it to Dante, so I was hoping he would help me remember his name. <laughs> come on, Dante, come on now. You remember Dante? I sent you the email. I'm blanking yeah, on his name. You're on mute right now. You're on mute. We can't hear you. Uh, he did that on purpose because he doesn't remember the name. He doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> I was trying to. No, hold I, him I don't remember his last name. I don't oh, remember okay. his last name. Yeah. But I can get I can get that to you, Linda, in case we need okay, it. Yeah. But um, you know, I think we'll have some great things going on for the um spring semester, and I'm definitely working to make as many connections um, within the community for that. Okay, we're gonna entertain two quick questions for the chair. Actually, I do have a, one as well. Um, mm -hmm. as well. So anybody have any questions for the new services chair? Okay, hearing none. All right, so it sounds great. Uh, make sure please, and this is for you, and this is actually for all the chairs. If you're planning events, please make sure to remember, Protocol is it comes to the exec, make sure that we, uh, we're we able to review it because we want to make sure everything goes out with the CB9 branding as well. And, you know, and I don't want any of the committees to feel that, you know, it's you and your band of five, six, seven members of the committee. We truly want to make sure that these are supported by the board 
We want to make sure that we're committing resources as much as we can as well. Um, and also, please make sure that you're also filling out, and you know, and especially in advance because you're already contemplating these things. Those budget forms are still critical. Please yep. make sure you fill out the budget form so that way we can have an idea in terms of what kind of support you're going to need. Um, you know, we want to figure out monetary, we want to figure out if we can get in-kind donations, we want to figure out if it's a matter of where we're asking elected officials for contributions, you know, but wherever places, mm -hmm. but we want to make sure that at least we have those numbers up front so we can start the conversations as mm -hmm. early as possible. But but thank you yeah. and the team so for, I'm for planning. Okay, okay oh, thank you. And I'm planning to try to get that in early January. So would the would a proper protocol also be it, like, would I be able to sit down with Dante or me or somebody to kind of go over a couple of things to know logistically what we can do? And like, if there's duties and things we need to split, what that is, how, you know, just to kind of know, you know, what is the procedure or protocol on that side of it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Dante, I'm sorry, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, typically what happens is a chair will uh, submit uh, the budget form. I will look over the mm -hmm. budget form because let's be realistic. We're both bu we're both busy. Um, mm -hmm. And so uh, if you want to sit down, um, have the budget form, we can go through it. Um, that's not a problem. Um, yeah, we can go through it, but I would just ask, send it to me first so I can get information ahead of time. So we're okay. not, you know, like just sitting there and I have to thumb through everything. That's a waste Got of time. You. So, yeah, I want to keep it efficient. Thanks. Okay, right. thank you. All right. Right. And also as a reminder for all the chairs as well. So remember, the committee has to actually vote on the event. So this has to be something, there's a quorum and the entire committee votes on the event and the form as well saying, yeah, this is what it looks like. So once that authorization comes, uh, the district manager can look at it, the treasurer can look at it, uh, and then the exec and so on and so forth. So at least we have all the information so that we can present to the board for final presentation. Uh, but but thanks for the report. I appreciate that. Okay, uh, let's see. Can we? I, oh, do is Warren there? Yes. Do we have a report for economic development? Hi, my son, my son just dropped something. He apologized. Yeah. Hi, everyone. It's Warren. Uh, the EGC Warren. did not meet this month, but. Um, we had a proposal out to Bridge Street for a shop local event, and they came back to us at a reduced price. Uh, the CB does not have money for these things. And based on that, we weren't able to implement it, uh, but we are helping them where we can for their community outreach. Um, and the other part is, is that we didn't have a meeting, but we will be reconvening in January. Thank you. Mute. Thank you very much for the report. Are there any questions for environmental, uh, sorry, for economic development? Any questions? Okay, hearing none. Um, okay, so I'm going to give the report for transportation. Well, before I go, are there any chairs, and I apologize uh, in advance, did I skip any of the chairs? Did anybody not give no, a. Okay, all right. All right, so for the last committee report that we have for this month is for transportation. So uh, the transportation committee met. A couple of items we had on the agenda. Um, last month, we there was a resolution that was passed or a motion that was passed um, by the committee uh, with respect to, um, they wanted a letter to go out to the uh, Department of Design and, Con and uh, Construction, I believe it is. DDC, uh, with respect to the intersection by Lincoln and Flatbush. That is a known trouble spot uh, in the district. It's it's difficult, the cars, you know, uh, you know, it's, it's a difficult intersection to navigate between cars cutting too short, pedestrians knowing which way is safe passage, um, you know, cars staying in lanes, especially because we have that weird intersection between Lincoln and Washington and Flatbush, uh, they're verging all there. So uh, I've spoken with the district manager. So we are actually in the process of engaging with the Department of Design and Construction to, to see what kind of solutions they can implement quickly with respect to that to improve safety on that corridor. Um, additionally, we had some conversations uh, with respect to there's a number of outstanding requests that we've had with Department of Transportation for a while. Um, and um, unfortunately, you know, it's, you know, they've been quite notorious where especially if it's requests for speed bumps, they take forever. 
Uh, so even once those requests go in, once they've been approved by the board, um, they go in, typically DOT has to do studies for those. Uh, and we've actually got a number of responses back denying uh, you know, pretty significant amount of the speed um, bumps that, speed humps that were requested. Um, so we had a little bit of a conversation in terms of rethinking the process, because when they deny these speed humps, what, what happens is the conditions that made us request the speed humps still stay. So there are issues with pedestrian safety, there's issues with speeding, uh, you know, just, you know, bad traffic management, whatever it is. So, um, you know, the, the committee had, you know, we discussed um, reframing it in terms of we are going to be taking an inventory of all those intersections and streets that we know are problematic within the district. And we want to put the onus on DOT to look at their toolkit to, to, to kind of figure out what is going to work. So as opposed to saying we want to speed hump here and get a no a year later and still have a dangerous, dangerous condition for a year, uh, we want them to actually let us know what they'll be able to do. Um, yeah, so additionally, uh, there were conversations with respect to some of the different projects that are happening in the district. The B41 project, which I will discuss a little bit more in depth when I get to my um, to my report. Uh, and, and actually, let me leave it there because I do want to dedicate a little bit more time in terms of my uh, my chairman's report, and, and I'll be able to devote a little bit more time to some of the, the issues that were discussed. But um, yeah, there were no action items specifically for this month for the board to consider. Uh, are there any questions with respect to the transportation? Pat, I see you. No, not really transportation, but I, I know Beverly said that she didn't hold a meeting for housing this. She could hold a, a meeting this month for housing, but I, oh, have, yeah. but I had a request that I really would like to acknowledge because it keeps showing up in my meetings. And so, hold on, if we can, if we can just close off transportation, just to make sure there's no transportation questions, okay. and then we'll take that one. We'll be okay. able to discuss. Is Beverly still there though? Oh, yeah, Ms. Newsom is still here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. Are there any questions for transportation with respect to transportation? Are we going to discuss the Grand Army Plaza thing? Yes, I will touch base on that because uh, I did have some outstanding DOT issues uh, as part of my chairman's report. So I'll, I'll touch on that as well. Okay. Okay. Um, any other questions for transportation? Okay, hearing none, Ms. Moses, we will take your question now. Hi, Beverly. Hey, Patricia. Good, listen, I, I just wanted to bring to your attention in reference to the Vito Brooklyn Initiative Program, where they have the 900 units of affordable housing. It consistently comes up in EULA and I consistently refer them to your uh, Tell me who they are again. Um, um, the beat up a uh, uh, Brooklyn initiative program. Oh, the vital that, Brooklyn program. Right, that's what the nine hundred. Uh, right, I know what you're talking about. And, and and the reason is because I really think that um, your your um committee really needs to be on top of this because we don't want that to be bypassed and and you know people don't get housing or whatever the case might be. So I thought. So are we talk. Mm -hmm. Go ahead, Patricia. Tell me, be more specific because I was under the impression that um, the housing component is for the working class in the hospital. No. And that's how Vital Brooklyn was grown, developed. What am I missing? No, go on, go on, um, go online. And if you look it up, they have like housing for senior citizens. Um, and they, they have, have social number. services as well. They have, right. So I just think that you need, your group really needs to be aware of what's going on there. And they also got jobs going um, that, that's going to also be offered too. So it's a state project, but it consistently keeps coming up in ULUP, but it's not a ULUP issue. But Under I, what I, aspect is it coming up? Well, well how I, is it coming up in ULUP, Patricia? Huh? How is it coming up in ULUP? I don't, it, it comes up through Jay. It's the name. I think oh. it's Jay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank hey, really, you. We could talk offline if you want to, because I really think that it may be. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I understand what you mean. All right. Thanks. Yeah, and if Thank we if we could possibly that. get a call, because I would like to, because I know that there's a lot of cross and there's been conversations going back and forth. So you know, just so that way, 
you know, if somebody's taking it, we can kind of figure out that you know, who's taking it, if anybody's taking it or what pieces, just so that way we don't have a circular conversation going on with that. So if it's something that I can be a part of that, I would definitely like to just kind of make sure that we're all clear on the same page. Yeah, got it. Okay. All right. Thank you very much for that. Um, Debbie? Debbie got Thanks, Patricia. Right. Oh, Debbie, Debbie, I'm sorry. I mean, I don't think I have a question, but I have a, a suggestion in terms of all of these big events that's happening um, around us, that it be, I don't know if it's, it, it would be good to put all these things on a, 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 a mm -hmm. spreadsheet and, you know, uh, keep, you know, an update as to what's going on, how it's progressing and things like that because there's a number of things that's going on. And I mean, I, I think that we are all over the place and we need to focus on, you know, all these things and make sure that we are, you know, on top of it in every area and aspect so that, you know, we're not lost and all over the place. That's all, that's my recommendation. No, thank you. Thank you for that recommendation as well. Uh, and, and, you know, and truly it's like, I want the chairs to feel empowered to be able to keep that. Um, to your point, I think it gives a consistency on a month to month basis, we can kind of see what's going on. And especially for those things that have been adopted by the board or if it's really a board level thing, uh, we'll do our best to make sure between Dante and myself, we're keeping those, um, those lists of priorities and upcoming events, you know, so that way we can keep track of those on a monthly basis. But thank you for the suggestion. Okay. Um, all right, I believe we've gotten all the report from the chairs. Um, yeah, we've gotten all the reports from the chairs. We have action items in terms of, I know that the SLA applications uh, will need to be approved and, you know, for, to move to the, um, to the general board meeting on Thursday. Uh, and we'll take care of that shortly. All right, so with that, we're gonna conclude the uh, committee reports. Uh, we are now going to move on to the administrative report from the district manager. Dante, you have the floor. I have, sorry, I have a question before you go on. Yes. Um, there were, but those committees that have not like uh, reported, like I think last week, last month, we had like two or three missing. This month again, similar. Would you be speaking to them? We're going to. Um, the committees, the committees are required to meet five times for the year. Um, okay. Definitely understanding the, you know, the last couple of months have been difficult. So we've given leeway, you know, you know, we've given deference to the chairs. If they, you know, if it wasn't feasible for them to meet in December or November, that's fine. Um, okay. Ma but Madam Secretary, if you have a record of somebody's going to fall short, please let me know. But All I think right. we still have time. I think if, you know, people are missing meetings, they will still have an opportunity over the next six months to make those up and be in compliance. All right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, yes. Dante, you have the floor, sir. Okay. Uh, well, good evening, everyone. Uh, good to see all of you. Um, happy holidays. So my report will be uh, rather brief. So there, um, for, so for the Empire um, Boulevard reconstruction, um, a sinkhole was discovered at uh, Empire Boulevard and Washington Avenue due to utility uh, interference um, and the condition of the sinkhole. Um, let's see, DEP, uh, was contracted out to stabilize uh, the damaged ground. So because of that, that um, delayed uh, the Empire reconstruction. And so I did receive word today that um, the contractor uh, who was to submit sewer work and uh, provide new submissions to DEP to have that corrected, uh, that work was approved. Um, it looks like very recently. And so uh, it looks like the contractor anticipates resuming the sewer work on Empire Boulevard between McKeever Place and Washington Avenue. Uh, should be starting that back as soon as December 19th. So you should, um, we should be receiving some notices coming into the board office like we usually do. Um, they will go out in our uh, constant contact. So just be looking out uh, for those notices. But I just wanted to make everyone aware um, that that um, project is going to be back online uh, soon. Um, as mentioned before, um, 
uh, I believe it was by Warren Bridge Street Development Corporation um, is doing uh, a consumer and business survey. Um, they did what they did one of these CDNAs, um, I believe in Bed-Stuy, um, if you're familiar with it. Um, they're going to be doing one recently in Crown Heights. And so um, that information is going to come out shortly. Uh, I would just encourage everyone, um, fill out the uh, consumer surveys. Uh, if you know of any business owners, make sure that you send it to them directly, have them fill it out. Um, you know, yes, it can be tedious, but I think that some of the information is extremely important. You know, from these reports, I think that they discovered that bed loses about $2 billion a year by spending outside of their neighborhood. And so that, that's, a, that's a lot of money. So this is like that type of information is extremely important. And I think that that type of information will craft, you know, the policy, you know, that we're going to see coming out um, in the future to come. So, you know, we want to be a part of that discussion. So just keep that uh, in mind. Uh, something that came up at the borough service cabinet meeting um, today um, was derelict bicycles. Um, you, might, you might be walking around the neighborhood, you might see derelict bicycles uh, attached to a street pole. Uh, they might even be attached to um, a bike rack, but they might not have wheels, whatever it may be. Uh, definitely DSNY will pick those up. So if you see them, take a photo if you can, uh, create a 311 request. Uh, and then once you create that 311, just shoot it over to the board office so we can keep up with it. Um, I did see a couple throughout the neighborhood. I can only imagine that you all did too. Um, it would be nice to get them off of the street. So please, um, you know, take a photo, create the 311 request, and then uh, reach out to the board office with that information. Um, let's see. The January calendar um, is set and it's on our uh, website. So you can go ahead and um, view the calendar for January. It looks like all of the committees uh, will be meeting their normal um, and usual uh, days of the week. Uh, so everyone should know which committee they're on, when they're meeting. Um, I believe the, I think the calendar and what uh, invites for uh, January um, have already been sent out for the committees. Um, so just if you didn't receive that, let us know. Um, but if you need to switch your committee meeting in January for any reason, just reach out uh, to me. Uh, so I can look at the calendar. January is going to be a little tight. We have some things going on. Um, so the sooner, the better. Um, let's see. We're looking to do um, a, well, let me word it like this. The public hearing for January, um, we're going to be looking to do a B41 town hall. Um, as many of you know, and I'm not sure if Many of you have participated in the transportation committee, but the, there's been conversations about about the B41 bus uh, that they're going to try to construct down uh, Flatbush um, throughout the borough of Brooklyn. Um, and so a lot of questions have come up. Um, the bus lane obviously will have impact likely on parking, likely on small businesses along the corridor. And so this is going to be. Um, a huge project coming into the district. So it's important that everyone, you know, if you need any information regarding the project, reach out to the board office. We'll find the information, um, any presentations that uh, DOT has done regarding it, and we'll send it to you. We want to make sure that everyone's informed on the project. Um, but we were going to, we're going to try to have a public hearing in January for that topic specifically. I think we're looking at the end of January, but um, a date will soon be solidified and we will send that out uh, as early as possible. Um, also, um, they're already starting to send out some of the free tax prep information from the Department of uh, Consumer and Work and Protection. So uh, in our constant contact this week, some of the information will be there. Uh, if you know of anyone who may need this service, have them reach out uh, to the board office so we can connect them with DCWP or, or a provider who provides it on their behalf, um, preferably sooner rather than later. Um, if we could get folks in the door, uh, that would be most helpful. So just reach out. Uh, regarding that. I have also already inquired uh, with DCWP uh, to see if we can, you know, possibly host one of those work, um, uh, workshops um, during maybe March. Um, April might be a little late, but um, just, I will notify you once any, anything gets solidified. I'll keep you guys apprised of that, but um, tax season is coming up, so just be aware of that. Um, let's see. Just a couple more things. Um, yes, any committee chairs, if you have um, outstanding minutes, just connect with Khalid at the board office. Um, 
we've been able to finally get a lot of the minutes up on the website. Uh, it was much of a hassle, very tedious um, and technical, but we've done it. Uh, so if you have any um, outstanding minutes, please reach out um, to us. Uh, if you have any questions about it, um, you know, we'll go back through our role to see what's outstanding, but we wanna make sure we get them up um, as soon as possible. Uh, so they're accessible to members of the public and everyone. Um, and then just the last thing is that, you know, there, there's a lot of stuff happening in the district right now. Um, you know, if you know of someone who needs information, right? Like we're talking the B41 bus uh, project, the Brooklyn bus network, MTA capital plan, the cannabis rollout, what that looks like, licensing, uh, licensing um, enforcement. There's a lot of things happening in the district. There's a lot of questions. And with some of these topics, a lot of concern. If you know of, if you need information, re please reach out to the board office. Don't wait until the last minute uh, for that information. If you know of someone who needs the information, um, have them call the board office and we'll, you know, we'll connect with them to see, you know, how we can actually get them the information if they don't, you know, have internet. We realize that, you know, not everyone has uh, internet accessibility. And so, you know, we're, we're trying to work with everyone here. So if you know someone needs this, please, I urge you, have them connect to the board office so we can uh, get them the information. You know, we want to get all this information out and we want to make sure that the information is accurate. And so um, as the information comes into the board office, especially over this holiday season and the rest of December, I can only imagine that it will. A lot of information is gonna be coming out via email. So just monitor your email um, over the holiday break. Uh, with that, that's my uh, report. Yeah, thank you very much, Dante. Uh, actually, I do need to, to ask for a slight indulgence with respect to uh, the, the agenda. So I would ask that we can hold off only because I think we may lose some officers because of you know this there's some time conflicts and we may lose some officers. I want to make sure that we're able to actually approve the agenda for Friday. So what I would like to do is actually go on to that last section with regards to setting the agenda, at which point we'll be able to come, you know, we can vote on that, have the officers vote, and then we'll come back, we'll take the questions for the DM, and I will give my uh chair's report for those afterwards. Uh, is there any for the officers, is there any um, objection to doing that? Okay, thank you very much. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna um, make that modification to the agenda. All right. Uh, so we're gonna go on to the actually setting the setting the agenda for uh, for Thursday. Uh, oh, Madam Secretary, please note uh, Kyrie Aline is on the on the I phone now as well. I did. Thank you. Very much. Thank you. On the ball, always on the ball. Thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. All right. So we are going to do. Um, we are, and Dante spoke about this. We are not going to have the hearing because we're doing the B forty one. Um, we're doing the B forty one at the end of the month, correct? Um, we so we had discussed the possibility of doing um, a testimony here. I, for I apologize. No, no, no. I'm confusing months. No. So, so the hearing is going to happen. The hearing is going to happen first. So we're going to have the hearing. At which point, once the hearing convenes after 30 minutes, we are going to uh, open the public session. So that'll be the call to order. It'll be rules of conduct. Dante, do we have any, any presentations for December? For December, no. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so then we are going to go into SLA applications. We have the two licenses that are gonna be considered for this month. We have Fiona's, and we have, which is a full uh, liquor, wine, beer, cider license, and which is a renewal. And then we have the Union Square Hospitality Group, uh, which is the request. Proper, let me just get you the proper name real quick. Thank you, appreciate that. Okay, so while you get that name, so we'll add that, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll make that, that correction as, as we go forward. But those are the only two uh, licenses that we're, we're hearing, correct? Oh, sorry, it's called Restaurant Associates, LLC. 
My bad. I really knew that one. Restaurants Association LLC. Restaurant Associates LLC and Hudson Yards Catering LLC. I'm sorry, it's such a long name, but that is the proper name. All right, so let me take out Union Square, Hudson Yards. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. Um, Okay, so uh, we have those SLA applications. After the SLA, uh, those presentations, then we are going to have public commentary. After public commentary, we are going to have acknowledgements. Okay, after the acknowledgements, we're going to go into the business session. We will have roll call. After roll call, we will have the approval of last month's minutes. We will then have committee reports. Okay, remember all chairs present, please remember, you do not have to give a report. Actually, it's encouraged, do not give a report. Submit yours, they will be given to the, the entire board as part of a package. Um, only if you have uh, you know, an urgent announcement to give chairs, we can give you some time, but only about less than a minute. Okay, so just want to remind the chairs for that. Okay, after the committee reports, we are then going to have... Um, treasurer's report? Yeah, I was just gonna ask Chris, do you have a treasurer's report for this month? Or will you just be submitting anything for uh, for informational purposes? Hey, um, can you hear me? Yes. Sorry. Um, no, I'm going to submit the treasurer's report uh, in the general board meeting on Thursday. Okay. Do you, do you need to present, or is it just for informational purposes? Uh, just for informational purposes. Okay, so we'll put that down. You can just make that announcement in terms of that. All right. Uh, so you're, you're talking about for the agenda on Thursday, right? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, yeah, so sorry, just to clarify, I'll, you can put it on the agenda. I think that'd be helpful. And then I'll just speak to it for two minutes or so. Okay, Is fair it? enough. So we'll, we'll, we'll have, yeah, you'll have your report. Then. Okay. Um, treasurer's report, then we're going to have the chairman's report. Thank you. Absolutely, sir. Well, the chairman's report. Um, excuse me, Mr. Baptiste. Yes. Oh, this is Naomi Baptiste reporting. Um, I was having difficulty coming to the Zoom, so you already had the chair speak. Uh, yeah, we did. Actually, we were rearranging the um the agenda just slightly. Right now we're doing, uh, we're setting the agenda for Thursday's meeting. Um, but we're gonna go back. We do have to take questions for the district manager and my report. If you have something brief you want to report at that time, you can do it then. Okay, and how do, how do I go about, I'm not gonna be in town next week. So um, how do I go about doing that? Doing if you have any, if there's any other meetings, I won't be, I won't be available. That's why, I, that's why I need to know what we're doing so I can prepare myself. Next week or this week? Because we're, we're meeting this Thursday. No, okay, no, because I'm leaving. I'll be out of town until the new year starting on the 19th. That's why I'm asking. Okay, no, no, we meet, we'll be meeting on the 15th. The board will meet on okay. the 15th. No, I okay. just want to make sure so I don't miss anything. Thank you. No, absolutely. Okay, uh, yes. Do you want the your report before the district manager? I'm sorry, uh, committee report. Thank you for, for, for catching that. We're gonna put the DM report before the treasurer's report. So the district manager's report, thank you. Okay, so the district manager's report, then the treasurer's report, then the chair's report. Um, okay, uh, after that, then we will have voting items. Yeah, we'll have voting items, which will be the two SLA applications. Yeah, so the two SLA applications will come for the voting. Um, 
Then we have one piece of unfinished business. Uh, we um, did not have quorum towards the end, so we did not finish the agenda. We had a vote which we lost quorum. So that's under unfinished business where we'll have the vote with respect to the bylaws vote in January. So for unfinished business, we'll bring that back. We'll take that up from the table. For the bylaws amendments. Okay, um, then we will take any new business. And then we will call for adjournment. All right, are there any items that are missing from this agenda? Okay, I'm not hearing any. All right, so with that, uh, I will entertain a motion at this time to uh, adopt the agenda as stated. Okay, I second that motion. Well, you can actually make the motion. <laughs> oh, we make a motion to adopt the agenda that for, yes. Okay, have it moved by Kyrie Aline. Do I have a second? Naomi Baptiste for the second. Oh, I'm sorry, Naomi. Remember, it's uh, officers only for, the, for this part. Oh, I'm sorry. No worries, yeah. no worries. Uh, seconded, Primo second. Lozano. Oh, officers only. Oh, Second. Wow. Second. Okay, <laughs> Linda, Linda Watson Lord. There we go. <laughs> so moved by Kyrie Lean, seconded by Linda Watson Lord. Um, all right. Are there any questions? I have one. Uh, have yes. Go ahead, Naomi. Um, why are the chairs here if we can't make any executive decisions? If you were here earlier, I had some good news for all the chairs. But we'll, oh we'll, no! I'm, I, uh, um, excuse me, <laughs> I'm sitting at a library trying to get an internet connection so I can be here. So I'm under, not even under, home. Understood. Um, okay. I will. I will touch on your point right after we, we conclude this vote. Are there any other questions uh, with respect, uh, respect to uh, the adoption of the uh, the agenda? Okay. Hearing none. Um, do we have common consent from the officers? Are there any objections? Hearing no objections, uh, the agenda is adopted by common consent by all those members of the officers who are present. Okay, thank you very much for that piece. Uh, so Madam Secretary, that's the agenda for the month. Um, now we will go back to normal order in the agenda. The last, where we had last left off, the district manager had given his report. Um, so at this time we will take questions for, for the district manager. Uh, I did see, I think Debbie, Ms. Moses, I saw you earlier. Ms. Newsom will take you there. So we'll take your, your, your questions right now. Uh, go ahead, Debbie. Hi. Okay, so this wasn't a quest, question. Well, it is a question for Dante pertaining. I know you said the bicycles that were attached to posts and things like that. What about the cars? I mean, the two uh, residents that came to the meeting, you know, one of them spoke about vehicles that's, you know, all over the place and they're just sitting there. Uh, do you have any information on that? Yeah, no, that's actually a very good uh, question. Uh, this actually is something that is an issue not only in this district, but throughout the borough of Brooklyn. Um, today, uh, the district managers, uh, along with the representatives from the borough office, met um, the uh, what do you call it? Tow, uh, Brooklyn Toe. Uh, to get a sense of, okay, why aren't these cars being removed off the street? Now, essentially what it is, is this uh, cat and mouse um, about <laughs> with these license plates. Um, see, the thing is, is if the car has no value, then DSNY can pick up the car, but it can't have any tags. So if it has a tag on it, even a paper tag on the inside of the window, which they can't obviously get to, they can't remove it. Um, and then it goes to PD. Uh, so you're seeing, you know, some folks who are, they know the law and um, they're manipulating the system when sanitation comes by and marks it up for uh, Roto. They're, you know, removing the yellow crayon that you often see on those uh, um, Rotos. And so, listen, this is a big issue. It was brought up today. To be honest there, you know, the what we're hearing, the major issue is essentially that there's no space to put the cars, essentially. Um, and also some of the cars that are being picked up, 
you know, if sanitation picks it up, well, essentially what happens is they have a vendor. A vendor com comes and picks it up, but if it's a valueless car, it just sits in their lot. And that's not really that helpful to them. Like they're a business, they have to make money. So we're seeing this clash with the lack of space where they can actually take the cars. Um, Is that why the pound was on fire today? Oh, I, <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> Yes, yes, go, yes, Debbie. Yes. Possibly, <laughs> possibly to make room to make room. Right. Hey, it's Warren. Uh, let me answer that question. Hi, Debbie and, and Beverly. Uh, the pound that was on fire was not the towing pound, it was down in Red Hook, uh -huh. and it was, it was basically uh, the place where all of the cars and motorcycles and everything needed for evidence are brought and cold case material yeah right where, where. so basically that's where the fire was and uh, the last i heard is that nypd is on it but it wasn't the towing pound thank you still making room warren still making room, <laughs> still making room. It's, not making room. <laughs> it's destroying our environment only right. because only because the article that I read said the toe pound. So yes, yeah. I'm just I just wanted to find it for you. The toe pound is by Wegmans on. Uh, it's, it's not in Red Hook. It's by Flushing Avenue and something else. It's right by mm -hmm. Wegmans. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you, uh, Ms. Moses. Oh yes, um. This is to Dante. Um, there's two things. First of all, we, I, we'd like to know what happens in those service cabinet meetings. And, and, and the one reason that I would like to know so that I can report back to my committee, because what happens is we always refer it to the district office. And there's some pretty serious issues. I'm not sure how y'all track it, but I know it's supposed to be recorded someplace. And I know that it's supposed to be a follow-up. I'm not sure how that's being done now because we, you know, the 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 board used to come into the office and and, and actually, you know, audit it. But we we haven't been into your office at all. I have no clue as to how that's being done. The second thing is, uh, when you talked about that Brooklyn um, bus remap or whatever, to me that information should have went into um, the transportation committee. And, and the reason I say it is because the meeting was already held on December the 6th. Right. And it wasn't just, it was like, it had the B43, B44, B45, 48, 49, B65, and B69. And then they also going to, that was, that meeting was held on Zoom on December 6th. So to me, it should have went in, right into that committee. And I don't know if information is going so they can follow up. So anyway, going forward, they it, it involves a, a number of community boards, two, three, six, nine, two, three, six, eight, and nine. And on Tuesday, um, February the 7th, from 6.30 to 8.30, that's when they're going to talk about how it's going to have an impact on community board nine. So each one of the each one of the community boards have a, a set time starting in January to where um, all of the people from the committee, I mean, from the community or whatever can come into this. Now, I don't know if you're aware of that, but if not, that information really should have went into transportation so that it could be followed up. If I can just speak to that very quickly. Transportation, I gave a very, very abbreviated um, transportation committee report. But these were all topics that have been discussed. Transportation is going to be a very hot issue over the next several months. Uh, I will touch upon some of what you've said. So I guess I'll be repeating some of what you said in terms of some of the priorities for transportation. Excuse me. <gasps> There are priorities for transportation in the district. Um, I'll be able to touch a little bit on that. Dante's given that. Oftentimes you'll see it's like, you know, we're approaching the things from, from both perspectives where Dante's looking at it from the, the administrative. He gets a lot of information from the agencies directly and from some of the different meetings that I go to as well. And we're always getting information from the agency. So you'll probably hear it from one or you know, one side or both. 
or even three, you know, when we go to the committee reports, but it's definitely something on the radar. And I, and I hear you, Fred, but I was trying to get the information from Dante, and it's really important because he is a district manager, and I know, I don't know if he's aware of, of all of this has taken place, because he said he's having a public hearing this way and that way. So if he doesn't have the information, I can send it into him so that he can... In his defense, I'll say this. He has sent that information directly to the transportation committee. Yes. So, um, you know, and I, I have to say that about the district office. They've been very good about trying to make sure they're forwarding information to the respective committees when it comes in. So that's why you'll get news articles, you'll get the notices and those things. Those items exactly what you're speaking with uh, uh, regarding have been forwarded directly to transportation. And I hear what you're saying. But to me, and the reason I, I, he is a district manager, and that's why I referred it to him. Yes, it does go into them, but also this is something that um, the whole entire board should be aware of. Because I'm not sure if they knew that there was a meeting on December 6th or not. Yeah, I, I know, but six o'clock I was in, I couldn't get up the train. You're quite right, miss. I support you in that. And I thought, because they saw it advertising the train. So that's how I know about it. Right. Well, so okay. that should have come in. Uh, like I said, I'm not trying to put anybody down. I'm trying to help you out because you got to get some info out there. That's all I'm saying. And I and I think that these things are extremely important that the district manager ensures that all this information gets out, not only to the board, I um, mean, to the chairs, but also to the some things go to the entire board that they might want to be aware of, and also the community. And so I never, you know, I listen to Dante's meetings. I mean, when he reports, but I never hear anything coming up from different places, like the service cabinet meeting, like, because I know a lot of people, they, they, and then they're coming back to me. So I, I have issues with it. So to me, whatever is going on in there, it should be recorded. And if I, you know, if we refer somebody to a, a situation and Dante, you're not able to handle it, then it should go to the service. Um, cabinet meeting, that's what they're for, but you never report back what's going in or out. Understood, and thank you for that. Uh, yes, the information, I'm gonna handle this two-step. Uh, the information for the Department of Transportation, the Brooklyn bus redesign, I sat through that, um, that presentation, that information was sent out to the Transportation Committee. Um, yes, I'm aware that um, that DOT is going to be holding specific sector meetings for specific community boards uh, that fit that piece of the puzzle for the uh, Brooklyn um, redesign. Uh, that information is in, I think, I, can't, I think it's January or February. Honestly, right now, you know, it's just a meeting. So I don't see sending it out right now because it's going to get lost. Um, more you know closer to time we would send that type of information out but sending it out mid december it's just going to get lost uh so that's why that information hasn't been sent out uh to the full board as it pertains to the district service cabinet i use the district service cabinet uh to essentially take the issues that i hear here here um in the office as they come up through um through one request and so forth and I meet with the agencies and I try to get real clarity on, on what's going on with the issue. So one specific one that I can think of uh, was that I believe a couple of folks had inquired about tree planting uh, in the district and had concerns. Well, those two individuals I connected with and I provided them with their information. Now, if this is something where you feel like, oh, the information that one person needs is valuable for all, then I will have to come up with a creative way of getting that information to everyone, but in a clean manner where it's not um, bombarding everyone. And the last thing I want to do is keep sending out email after email after email uh, to board members with information. Um, we really ask a lot of the board members to sign up for the weekly e-blast. So then I wouldn't have to send an email. If you sign up for the weekly e-blast, all of this information's in it. All right. And so we're trying to steer the ship one way, right? If everyone's on the e-blast, board members have the same information as all of the resident members who have signed up for the listserv. So that's transparency. That's good. That's what we want. Um, but if there's anyone in here who feels same, right? Like the Brooklyn, if, if, they, if they would prefer committee information to be sent to the entire board, because yes, some of these are district-wide issues and I understand that, 
then I have heard those suggestions and I will figure out how to do that accordingly. Okay, yeah. I'm going to end here, but that's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that um, if, if, if in fact, do you have a method where it's written that when I refer somebody to the district office, let's just say my committee, and, I'm, and it's coming from, let's say, EULA, which it is. And so they should be coming back. They should be coming back to me to say, yes, it's been solved. Not, I don't know what's going on. So my my question to you is, how would I could I call into the office and find out where is when it's recorded, and and when the follow up was done? Would that be in writing? That's my question to you. Sure. Yeah. If someone on your committee. Yeah. That that has. I have no problem with that. That's that's not a big deal. Um, yeah. You know. If you. Yeah. Sure. I would definitely encourage all the chairs. Actually, I encourage that because a lot of. I see some committee members sending messages to me, and I'm. I see that the committee chairs aren't included in the conversation and that's where information gets lost so you know if a committee chair and a committee member and myself if that's how we need to carry a conversation to make sure things get done i'm fine with that um i also i also will note that we i do respond to people often i respond and people don't like the information that i provide to them and then that turns into i wasn't helpful um we do our due diligence in the in the board office and of course if we slip up i'll be the first one to 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 stand up and say, okay, that was my bad. Um, but your suggestions are duly noted and um, uh, we'll work on that together. Thank you. Of course. Okay. All right, we need to move along. So Beverly, we will see yours. We will take brief questions. It has to be brief. Questions. Uh, Beverly, we see you. Warren, we'll close on you. My concern is, it's a couple of things. One, I'm asking where are we in regards to Tivoli Towers and that big hole that's still there too. I am finding that, and it, it's kind of in line with what Patricia is saying. Agencies are speaking to agencies when they're supposed to be providing service to communities. So communities are asking questions, street bumps, um, tree pits, excessive tree pits, just various things all over the city. And because community is required to go to an agency and the agency will give an answer to another agency, the community person is still standing waiting for an answer. And I'm finding that in, in agencies have never spoken to communities, but I'm finding that during COVID, it's gotten incredibly worse. So now communities really don't get engagement with agencies. That's from NYPD down. And I'm asking, when you do the cabinet meetings, Dante, give us a synopsis on in each area. It doesn't have to be long and drawn out. The cabinet, the, the DM report that you've given us, we don't really know what happened. Just like Patricia said, when there are questions, there's an investment. You can't give the detail that a community member can give in regards to the 41 going down Flatbush how Grand Army Plaza is gonna be closed off, separating part of Brooklyn from another. Tree, excessive tree pits, when many of them from years ago, a tree was never planted in there. Now they're going through this again. You don't have that level of detail that community members have. So that's why I'm saying we need more detail in your DM report covering the areas that we are asking questions about. And Tivoli, they stopped work on it. The, the stuff was taken out of the street, but I'm still looking at a hole, not as big as, not as open as it was. And the tenants are saying no bricks are falling, but now we're looking at the possibility of scaffolding being permanent, not just for Tivoli, but for Ebbetsville as well. So those are my two big things. Okay, well, understood. Um, for the Tivoli, uh... You said that, could you repeat what you said about Tivoli? We're looking at it not being repaired. It's not uh, repaired. Yes, but you said more than that. What else did you say? When is it going to be repaired? <clears throat> okay. Everything was taken out of the street. Now the scaffolding is up. Ebbsville has had scaffolding up for 11 years. Right, that's perfect. And so you said everything was taken out of the street. I didn't know that everything was taken out of the street. When was everything taken out of the street? I, and that goes back to my point. 
of your not having the minutia and the community members having. There are no bulldozers in the street. There are no, the street's not blocked off anymore. But the, but the opening is still in Tivoli. And that's been for some time. We went back, the bus continued going through, started going back there maybe two weeks ago, three weeks ago, maybe. And that, that, that is what I'm talking about. And look how close Tivoli is to Community Board 9. So where are we on that? And when we're talking about scaffolding being up, the rule was DOB, which is an agency that you meet with, scaffolding would only be up a year. <laughs> Tivoli had scaffolding up before the bricks broke. Ebbetsville had scaffolding up for 10, 11 years now. What happened to the year rule? That's why I asked the question before you had the last cabinet meeting. And this is not, this is not reprimanding you. This is not criticizing. This is illuminating an issue that agencies are talking to agencies and not community. Okay. Understood. Um, yeah, so I will have to get you updates for those. Uh, and then I, I hear um, the suggestions about more detail. Um, I can most certainly do that, and um, you will see that that change forward. Thank but you, I, Dante. I, I, I appreciate also, it. I also want to make this very clear um, because, like, <laughs> I'm going to defend myself and my staff. Um, when you all have specific questions, it's you can correspond with me. Please check your email because I do email, and I email rather quick, right? I email information I get directly from the agencies to an individual who has inquired with me, okay? So if you have a specific question, now I wanna make this very clear. Talking about it in the committee meeting is not a specific question to the district manager. That is not a specific question to the district manager, right? What I would need is a an email, a correspondence, something that says, hey, okay, this is an issue, find out for us. And I will, without a doubt, reach out to Damaris at the Department of Buildings and have her Talk to her colleagues and see exactly what's happening there. That but I will do, be but, but hope, before we move, Dante, but I do want to thank in public forum, Mia for giving me the heads up in regards to the Tivoli situation coming up in ULERP. And that made me reach out to Tivoli as a housing chair and as a neighbor and have an extensive conversation. So I'm not criticizing your team at all. I'm just illuminating what I feel an issue with. That's all I'm doing. Understood. Well, I will also illuminate that if you're going to have a conversation and then want to be in it, just bring me into the fold, right? You're talking about connecting with someone, bring the DM into the fold. I don't know everyone. There's great people on this board who know a lot of other people, right? This is a network. And so if, if you're having conversations, I ask, send me an email, drop a call. If we need to meet, if I need to meet with a tenant association or whoever, I will find the time to do that accordingly. But making the connection is on everyone here. Okay. Uh, with that, we need to move on. So Warren, we'll see your question and then we need to move on the agenda. Yeah, I don't have a question, I have a comment. Um, our board has made great strides in transparency and increasing the process. Mm -hmm. And listening to both what Pat and Beverly said, um, I really think that we should take a look at our process there, uh, knowing that our district manager and his staff has been the most transparent that we've seen. Uh, my suggestion is, is that maybe Dante should consider, um, and it's a suggestion of doing a meeting notes as we do in any committee for his district council. Um, what happens a lot is based on those meeting minutes, a lot of other questions could be raised and a lot of other issues, you know, could be informed to help Dante do his job. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that. And 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 just uh just just to put kick the horse one more time. The one thing that I think, uh, you know, I've been trying to champion for a while is it's always good when we do this, when we have the complaints or, or we do this, but it's important for us to be able to, to, to create something, a data point for that, a record for it. 
uh, which is the reason why I always recommend, and I'll, you know, I'll continue to do this. If there is a specific complaint, we need to make sure that we're logging them, doing two things. One, logging it in 311, because the city is very data centric in terms of they're going to look at how many complaints you have about something or how much of whatever it is, and that's how they create their metrics. And based on those metrics, is how everyone gets rated. So what's very important for us to do is, one, make sure we're putting those things into 311. And then the other piece of that is being able to refer that to the district office so that way they have that piece as well. So that way they can create a report of, listen, I have X amount of 311 reports about abandoned cars, X amount of 311 reports about scaffolding, X amount of 311 calls about, excuse me, uh, you know, whatever, you know, insert whatever the complaint is. But that helps us get to a point where we can be more data centric and we can track things and we can age things as well. Uh, going back to the example of uh, the speed bumps, uh, the district office team actually was able to do some of that work. And in terms of we're creating an aging schedule, so we know what complaints are out there, what the common complaints are, and we can actually start making movement on some of these as well. Uh, but I just want to put that and actually let me leave that as a transition. Let me go directly to the uh, the chair report because uh, I think that some of these themes you're going to see are going to be common amongst you know between the committee reports and everything else. Uh, I will try and be as expeditious as possible, but we got a lot of things going on in the district. I think as as we heard. Um, Okay, let's try this first. So first, uh, I, I've heard you know from a number of the committees, uh, the chairs about attendance, about uh, you know not being able to achieve quorum and things of that nature. So this is part of a larger project that I'm working on with the district office. Um, they've started compiling the data with respect to board attendance. Uh, we're you know we're, we're documenting the issues with regards to committee attendance as well. So that's something towards the end of the month uh, that we're looking at actually starting to create packages or we've been doing some communications as well, trying to figure out what's going on. But the idea for the new year, uh, we wanna get clean. So what I would just ask for the chairs is if there are continuous, um, if there are continued issues that are happening as of January, please let us know. But otherwise we intend to start doing the actions in terms of cleaning up rosters, making, uh, removing people from committees, uh, and we are going to be starting the process in terms of uh, if people have just really um, not honored their commitment to the board and not shown up in terms of starting the process for removals. So it's going to happen. Uh, I think that as a board, we try to be understanding. We try to make sure that we, you know, you know, I, I think I say this all the time, we understand life happens. We're, we've been living in difficult times, but at the same time, the board needs to be able to function. And, you know, you know, people need to be either committed to this or they need to step to the side or be asked to move to it as well. So that's something that's gonna be happening over the next few weeks in terms of some of those processes will be starting. Uh, if you are a chair who has specific members who have not shown, uh, the Euler chair, uh, as, as, you know, as per the conversation I just had with the Euler chair earlier, if you have members who have not been showing up, please send me a note or please address an email to me with those specific members uh, requesting for them to be removed. At that point, I can respond approving the removal and we will be able to take them off the rosters. And at that point, we'll be able to make whatever the moves we need to make. Okay, um, all right, yeah. So there's a number of things that we've been kind of talking about that we're actually gonna be uh, addressing over the next few um, the next few weeks, months. Uh, transportation is going to be a very big issue topic. Uh, we've already talked about a number of things that are going on. The B41 uh, bus project is something that has started. They're starting with the community advisory board of which CB9 is actually a part of that. Uh, so I've had an initial meeting along with the district manager where we've had that conversation. Um, but one of the things that we know is that DLT tends to be very, uh, they, they tend to do a lot of things without input from the community. So one of the things we want to make sure is that we were trying to be proactive in terms of understanding what are the requirements for anything that they're going to do in our section of the 341 corridor. So we are looking at scheduling a town hall specifically uh, with regards to getting uh, testimony and, um, and, and input from the community driven by CB9. We are going to be inviting um, MTA, we're gonna be inviting DOT and other uh, stakeholders as well. But the idea is we wanna start you know, identifying what the issues are, the challenges are that we are, you know, that we need to make sure are addressed as a part of any, any, any uh, changes that they make in the corridor. Uh, so we wanna make sure that we're dictating as opposed to being dictated to. Um, additionally, um, yeah, so anyway, so as I said, so we're gonna be having a, in January, we're looking at having an actual town hall 
tentatively speaking, I think it's supposed to be towards the end of the month, 30th or the 31st. Uh, but we'll be confirming that and we'll be sending out placeholders and we're gonna need all hands on deck because we want everybody to be able to weigh in on that. Uh, Grand Army Plaza is something that also came up as well. Uh, so from the initial conversations, they had a, held a workshop I believe it was in the earlier part of December. Uh, this is going to be uh, an extended process in which uh, this is going to be over the course of better than a year, I believe it's closer to two years, in terms of they're doing workshops, they're getting input, they're getting ideas. The process from what I understand is supposed to end in a study that doesn't happen till towards the end of 2024, in which they'll be doing any, you know, making any recommendations at that point. Uh, but it's something that as a board, we're definitely keeping an eye on. The Transportation Committee has uh, you know, discussed this and it's something that we're keeping track of as well. Um, and as we get additional information, we'll be sharing it with the board and with the, the community as well in terms of workshops and, and future events with respect to that. Um, but we definitely understand that, that that has the potential to, you know, even though it's not specifically in CB9, it has the potential to be disruptive if it's done very badly. So we're keeping an eye on that as well. Uh, something else that came in with respect to transportation and we talked about it earlier, uh, Lincoln Road. Uh, the Lincoln Road, Flatbush, uh, Washington corridor is, is difficult. Uh, and being generous and being nice about it. Uh, so we're having conversations with the uh, Department of Design and Construction to see what we can do in terms of calming traffic or at least making it more predictable so that way uh, we can incre increase pedestrian safety. We can make sure that drivers and, and, and cyclists have a better understanding of how to navigate that, that particular corridor, which has been treacherous in the past. So that is a conversation that we are setting up and we'll be able to report on that to the committee and to the board, board hopefully uh, in short order. Uh, additionally discussed in transportation, again, I apologize, we didn't do it specifically in transportation, but I wanted to cover this. Um, we've got a lot of things, a lot of projects. So the Brooklyn bus redesign is something that has come to, come up as well. Uh, this is something that I believe had started even before the pandemic. It's coming back now. We want to make sure that we're very active in terms of, uh, you know, giving uh, feedback with respect to uh, what we feel should be the changes in terms of improving bus service uh, in Brooklyn and specifically in the district. So we will be participating in that. Um, additionally, having conversations about city bike. City bike is supposed to be expanding into the district. The initial rollout uh, came before and it was in the, north, the northern part of the district. So um, DOT has informed that there is actually gonna be an expansion that's gonna come further south and it's gonna go further east as well. So we're gonna have a number of these things that are coming out. So what we're looking at is in the January timeframe to have uh, DOT and city bike come and talk about the expansion. Uh, where these locations are going to be uh, and making sure that they're also not disruptive to the district. So while we're trying to improve access to it, we also want to make sure that it's 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 it's, it's harmonized with the needs of the district as well. Um, bike lanes, additionally, we're looking at that in terms of if we're putting all this expansion in there, we want to make sure that there's a sensible, you know, a, a, you know, a strategy that makes sense in terms of how are they doing this. Because um, if we're going to put more people on bikes, we want to make sure that the safety is there as well uh, and that it's harmonized with the current traffic patterns or if there are changes that need to be made. So we are working, we are, the intent is for that transportation committee to work very closely with DOT in terms of making sure that these are uh, all put out there. Lastly, I think in terms of safety all around, uh, and I mentioned that before, we are looking at traffic calming in terms of uh, there are just a number of intersections which have been known to us for years. Are problematic, so we want to go back to DOT uh, and really, you know, kind of have them, you know, be real partners in this in terms of helping us to deal with these issues that have been chronic for years um, in the most, you know, in the fastest way possible, so that we were not waiting years and years for these improvements. Uh, because the longer we have these, then we keep hearing about these tragic accidents between, you know, pedestrians and cyclists and, and all the other um, issues that we've, we've had. So those are some of the things with respect to transportation that we're looking at. Uh, the district manager also discussed the Empire Boulevard um, scenario with the sinkhole uh, and the work that they're doing. With respect to that. Okay. Uh, again, we have a lot of things that are going on. So Borough Hall, we sent out a notice with regards to a comprehensive plan that Borough Hall is in the process of trying to draft. The comprehensive plan, and I'm probably not going to explain it properly, um, but as envisioned by Borough Hall, is supposed to be a document which kind of outlines what the current issues and existing issue conditions are in, in the borough. Um, this plan is supposed to be outlined in, in it's supposed to be uh, 
a, a plan that that looks at health outcomes. How do we improve that? And uh, I believe the plan is for Borough Hall to try and say, well, listen, any zoning that is done is supposed to be done with an eye of improving health outcomes in the different districts. Um, so on, uh, is it today, Tuesday? On Monday, they had the initial outreach for that. Um, so they had uh, an, a review of the existing conditions report and they've gotten some initial feedback. That is actually, that document is actually open on Borough Hall's website. So I would encourage everyone to go there and look at the report and provide any feedback as well. The next stage of that, so they're in the data collection piece. Um, the next stage of that is supposed to be outreach to the district. So my understanding is that's supposed to happen in the next month or so, or the next month or two. So uh, I'm definitely making sure that um, there is conversation that comes directly from Borough Hall to the district with respect to what they are trying to accomplish. Um, Additionally, I think that, you know, we're also dealing with, I think you know, there was a recent announcement by City Hall with respect to um, different regulations that they're looking at changing with respect to development, with respect to approving permits, uh, which is part of that whole BLAST um, initiative that uh, the mayor was looking at. So there are definitely a number of uh, initiatives and rules and regulations they're trying to promulgate, which will have significant impacts in the district. So um, as the, uh, the Euler chair, you know, had noted that there is a city of yes subcommittee that had been impaneled as of last month. They are scheduled to meet. So some of these conversations will be coming through there as well. And as we get additional information, we want to make sure that as a district, we are weighing in on some of these because they will, you know, I'm anticipating there's gonna be some significant impacts to, to the way things have, uh, are constructed in the district and citywide. So we want to make sure we're keeping our eyes open with respect to that. Um, community board. Uh, applications. We are now at that time. Borough Hall has already opened up the community board applications. So um, they are accepting applications for members, uh, for new members. If you are uh, a member of the board whose appointment is expiring this coming March, please make sure you go on uh, to the website uh, and upload your application uh, for reappointment. So if you are a Borough Hall appointee, make sure that you, you do that. If you are an appointee of a council member, please make sure you are getting in touch with your council member and letting them know that you are still interested in, in, in serving on the board if you are interested in serving. Uh, also as well, because it's been a question in terms of the diversity of the board. Um, how many people do we have and is the board truly representative of the district? So if you know of people who are qualified, who are dedicated, who are gonna to come to meetings and committees, um, please make sure that you are uh, disseminating this amongst your networks. Uh, so that way we can try and get as, as large and diverse a pool as possible so that way we can improve, uh, you know, we can improve representation on the board. Currently, I believe we have about 43 members, so there are still about six or seven slots that we would like to have filled, uh, but we want to make sure that we have a dedicate, you know, people who are dedicated to, to the work of the district. Um, along those lines as well, last year what we had done was we had actually done a, um, an open house, which I think was pretty well received in which we were able to talk a little bit about CB9, a little bit about the work you do uh, and, and discuss the process and, and answer some questions for community residents as well. So we wanted to do that uh, again this month coming up. So in January, we're looking to actually replicate that. Uh, I believe we're looking towards that third week of January. So uh, once that date is solidified, we'll be sending out a notice to all board members. Again, please make sure you're sharing in all the networks and we'll be posting on the board and, and advertising as well. Um, my understanding is I believe the deadline for applications is in February, so we do have some time, but we wanna make sure that um, we're getting the word out as much as we can as well. Um, all right, I've already discussed some of the outstanding DOT issues in terms of we're gonna be working very closely, documenting the things that are out there and making sure that um, they're addressed. Uh, I wanna thank the district office because they've actually been very uh, instrumental in terms of going out to our elected officials as well and getting their support with moving some of these along. So we had an enthusiastic uh, response from, uh, from council member Rita Joseph's office. Uh, we're looking to do the same thing with our other council members as well in terms of identifying those traffic issues um, or just outstanding issues, period, in terms of making sure those are done. So whether it be speed humps, traffic cameras, uh, bicycle racks, that's other uh, conversations we're having as well. So we're trying to make sure we move those along. Uh, all right, it was brought up before as well with the cannabis licensing protocols. So as we get closer, I think Brooklyn is one of the last places in terms of the actual licensing, but we are seeing a proliferation of places that are opening with the full intent of actually selling uh, legal marijuana in the district. 
we're, excuse me, we are already seeing issues in terms of where these locations are opening up. Um, some of them, it looks like, are opening up, uh, I guess they're doing pre-sales uh, or they, they're starting to do sales there and they'll start selling legal uh, cannabis products as they go. Some of them aren't waiting and they're doing that as well. So there are a number of conversations we have to have with respect to uh, making sure people are operating legally. We're probably going to have to have a conversation with our elected officials as well in terms of where these things are coming up. Uh, we've already had issues in terms of they're coming up near schools. Um, so that's something as a district we need to have a conversation with, uh, with our local, with our city council, you know, with the city legislators, as well as the state in terms of where these things are going and, you know, and how this is being handled. Um, so, so there will be, be conversations about that. Um, and we are going to be taking testimony and, 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 and collecting information from the, from the community. Uh, I wanted to touch very briefly on the bylaws amendment. So last month, uh, we've approved that it's going to come back as unfinished business, but the intent was to have those bylaws amendments uh, be considered for the January meeting. So as part of the package, uh, we had uh, given all of the tracker, which has all the amendments which have been submitted to the board. So this information is going to be given to the board and to it will be posted on the CB9 website as well. So people will have access to them to see what changes are gonna be made. The intent is in January to have discussion on these items and to actually make decisions in terms of what we can do to improve processes in CB9. Uh, how we work, how we operate, uh, how we come to decisions um, and just basically improve our operations and efficiency. So that'll be something that's gonna come up uh, over the next month and we're gonna have opportunities to discuss the, the individual amendments that have actually been put out. Two other things I wanna put out, uh, one of them I've already discussed with regards to the mayor's initiatives. So again, we need everyone to make sure you're looking at your emails because these things are developing. Um, and, and some of these things we see are developing without necessarily input from the communities. So we are looking at some of the regulations that are being promulgated by the mayor by the mayor's office, some of them from what the early analysis looks like are these are things that he can do out of his office. There will be some things that are going to require city council approval, and there are going to be some aspects of the, his initiatives that are going to require state approval as well. So again, we're going to be looking very closely at these. We'll be looking through ULERP, through the city of yes uh, subcommittee, um, and as well as, you know, as we get information from other sources, we're going to be providing that as well. So that way uh, we can have some, some really in-depth um, serious conversations with respect to that and how it, what the impacts it has on us. Lastly, I just want to put it on everyone's radar. I think last year, one of the, the great events that we were able to pull um, was the community fair. I think that there was a, a lot of good input. I think it was a great opportunity for us to get together as a board and as a district and as a community. So we want to start the conversation conversations with respect to that. Um, I think last year we had done it around June, so we want to give ourselves roughly that amount of time, five to six months, in terms of being able to plan. There is nothing that's been set in stone, but I just wanted to put that out there in terms of this is going to be a conversation that we're starting. And, you know, I encourage everyone to think about, you know, what was, you know, what went well with the last one and what improvements we want to make in the community fair, in, in a community fair, um, and, and, you know, and just, you know, start the, the you know, the, you know, the ideation part of the, of, um, the process. So that'll be coming up and we'll have additional conversations in the next month or so. Uh, there's a lot there and I appreciate everyone's patience while I went through this uh, uh, report. But I think that as again, the, what's been the theme throughout this entire meeting is there's a lot going on. We have a lot going on in the district, a lot going on in the city. Um, so I thank everyone in advance for your attention, um, for, for, for making sure that you're keeping your ear to the ground, for making sure that you know going to these meetings and making sure that CB9 spaces. Um, so with that, uh, I had no action items in this, uh, and I will entertain questions. Okay, Kyrie, I do see. Kyrie, you had a question? Hello. Yes. Oh, my apologies. I know I actually showed up late here tonight only because I've been out at events all evening and I definitely have to go now. I just wanted to make a note and just say that. Well, I'm gonna try and stay a little longer, but thank you. Uh, okay, all right, thank you. Uh, let's see, I see Beverly and then I see Warren. Yes, Beverly. Um, Fred, 
what are we going to do to get DOT and MTA at the table? Because even though we're doing the form, they know it's going to be about them. And that that's not something they typically show up to because they're not really community focused. They say what they need to say. They do what they want to do. So how are we going to get them well, to show up? Well, well, let me say let me say this. First of all, I think one of the the powers of the of the board is that we can have ask you know request representation from city agencies, particularly about things that have to do with the district. Um, they haven't really pushed back on having people there, so um, I'm but being we're talking about this. Understood. Sorry to interrupt, Fred. We're, we're, but we're talking about decision makers, not someone to come into the meeting, take down notes, and we we we're left with what well, they. We're left. We, we don't have any more than they did when they came. Right. Well, well, well the intent. Isn't that the whole purpose of the forum? No, the intent of the town hall is really on the community side, understanding what our issues are and what we want to see out of it. So, really, they're more mm-hmm. informational in terms of, you know, what the scope is, what they've discussed, some of the toolkit. Some of this information is, you know, uh, it might have been seen through the, um, at least in the transportation committee, but we want for the district to be able to see this as a whole. So this is a CB9 event. But again, I think that the real intent is we want the community to come in and actually be able to give their impressions in terms of oh, what okay. the issues are. So And so DOT and MTA sit and listen. Yeah. Oh, I mean, okay. answer Got some it. questions if asked, but you know, but otherwise okay. it, this really is something to be driven by the community. Okay. Got it. Thanks. No, you're welcome. Thank you for the question. Warren. You're welcome. Hey. Um, I just wanted to add in terms of your areas of examination for the mayor is the whole mental health issue. Uh, It's very important and affects everyone in this community. Um, There's a lot of debate about whether his initiative to uh, bring people who are in danger to themselves or acting out involuntarily. Uh, but I think that's something we should hear from the community and their thoughts. Thank no, you. Point, point very well taken. Thank you for that. Uh, and I'll definitely, you know, we'll have a conversation with the chair of health and social services as well in terms of, uh, you know, how do we act on that and how we make sure that our, our viewpoints are put forward there. But thank you for, for bringing that up as well. Okay. You're are welcome. There, all right. Are there any other questions? Um, are there any other questions for the chair? Uh, Debbie, I see you. Yes. Go ahead, Debbie, you have the floor. Hi, again. So I, I, you know, I hear that we're all talking. We do have electeds in the community. And I think that they should be a part of this conversation because this is bigger than the community board itself. So, I mean, at one point, do we interact with our elected officials to let them know what our concerns are in the community and what, you know, what, what is, is their role in this big, you know, broad, you know, aspect of different things that's affecting us in different ways, you know, I mean, it, it's a conversation that needs to be had and it's, bigger than us you know i mean you know that's my concern right now yeah no no absolutely point well taken um and and they are expected to be invited as well to come to the to the to the town hall um and, and absolutely i think anything we do from from the community board perspective has to include the elected officials so we need to be in conversations with our council members we need to be in con- conversations with our state officials uh i think at this point what we wanted to do is um you know it's hard to say, you know, to tell them what we want, because I think as a, as a community, we don't quite know what we want yet. Um, so part of it is informational. Part of it is to get that feedback to really figure out what the priorities are for the district and hear it from the district directly. So but that's definitely the next step in that in terms of once we've kind of gotten that, once we understand what the points are, we can come up with our list in terms of, listen, these are the principles that you should be doing if you're going to touch any bus redesign in the district. If it's the 41 or anything else. So, you know, we need to make sure that there's 
there's ease of access. We need to make sure it ensures pedestrian safety. We need to make sure that it's reliable service. We need to make sure uh, there are, are benches, uh, seating. Um, we need to make sure that you know there's access for the you know for for the uh, the vendors and merchants on the corridor as well, so on and so forth. But I think that's part of what we're trying to do is drive that conversation and get what those priorities are for the district. Yeah, and it's also not a conversation. I mean, it's more than a conversation. It's it's putting things in writing, so it's not just you know talking. Um, you know, a lot of things that you know, I mean, that these these big issues that you know coming up and you know on us, and you know, is you know day in day out, you hear the same thing. I mean, it, it's it's about conversation, yes, but it's also about putting things in writing. So it's 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 in black and white, and. You know, yes, we had that discussion and, you know, what came out of it and where right. we, you know, would like it to go and, you know, things like that. Because, I mean, the city has a fiscal budget year and if it's something related to funding, we want to make sure that it gets to them sooner than later. So things like that, you know, it's not just talk. It's about putting it in writing as a community board and, right. you know, letting them know these are the things that we want you know um absolutely yeah. and along so, those lines and and along those lines you know and i want all the chairs and all the board to think about it as well at the end of every process if we have come to a decision about what we want it should culminate in a resolution and the resolution says these are the facts as we know it and it's resolved this is what we want one two three four five six 21 whatever it is but i think that you know once we get to the end of that yes you, you're absolutely right we need a statement of what we want. And it's from that point, that's when we get, and that's that's what I'm saying, from that point, that's when we engage the um, the elected officials in terms of, no, no, this is the resolution. This is everything that's important to this district. And we're able to do that and we're able to pursue those things and, and follow it to, you know, if it's a matter of going to the state with it or if it's going to city council with it, but we follow those things as we go because it's a statement of what we're looking for as a All right, um, you know? Yes, thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, this end of the district, as you know, I'm a broken record. Um, most of our issues are quality of life issues. Um, I have to say that um, since uh, the last email between you and Dante, I think we've had a little more uh, quiet nights around here. It's not as bad as it was. So I want to thank you guys for um, for that as we're with our um, or precinct this, this and um, or community um, offices. However, um, what we find is that we have a lot of uh, social services and um, shelters on this end or further back beyond Winthrop and around. And we find that a lot of um, people are just, it's getting colder and they're trying to find room. Um, we try to ensure that we have a garage uh, entrance on Rutland. I mean, it, the cars have to be speeding in just so that if it's very cold, somebody's not running behind. Um, but the issue is, is that is there anything that uh, that we can set up at this side of the district. I know Kings uh, Battle Brooklyn, as far as Kingsbrook Jewish is concerned, I'm not sure where that is. I tried reaching out to our liaison who, um, Miss Dillard, who was working with us um, and trying to see where we are with this. We usually have a quarterly meeting. Um, I don't know. I have not been um, privy to the, to the past couple of meetings, so I don't know what is going on or if they're still having meetings. Um, that's what I know. Uh, Francesca was also involved in the meeting, myself and Francesca, so I am not sure if that if quarterly meetings that we were having is still is still going on. That 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 that's one of the issues. So I'm just wondering um, on this end of the district how we can you know, a meet and get a little support. Uh, we have uh, some issues as far as a lot of the buildings coming this way, the quality of life issues. We're worried about the height, the density, the air quality, all of that. 
So at some point we did have in the housing committee, we did have a discussion, um, you know, as to what we want to do. Um, I've been uh, uh, meeting with uh, CB14 and 17, their housing also, in trying to leverage because they're now in the same plight that I am in. So um, is there any way that we could collaborate across uh, with some issues that cross over and affect our neighbors in the neighboring uh, community district, just to make sure we have uh, a greater impact on um, these elected officials and agencies that we can show a united front. No, absolutely. And I think you're kind of foreshadowing some conversations we're already starting to have. Uh, you know, and, and I definitely need to give credit to our district manager. So he's already started the process in terms of trying to coordinate with some of the adjacent boards. So, you know, and this is something I, you know, we said for a while, the, the issues don't stop at Eastern Parkway. It doesn't stop at Utica. It doesn't, you know, it's not a totally different set of issues once you cross Clarkson. So uh, we are doing outreach to CB8, to CB14, to CB17. Um, you know, with the Flatbush Avenue corridor a little bit further down, even this uh, CB18 as well, because you're right, we do need to have a, a more coordinated um, response, because I think a lot of us are sharing the same issues. Yeah. We're sharing the same issues. So the conversations that happen in our housing are very similar to what happened in housing in 17 and 14. So it only makes sense that we should be doing um, more collaboration and having more co uh, conversations. Um, so yeah, so hopefully we'll have more to report about that. This is something that uh, our district manager, you know, again, I'm, I'm very proud of him. He's the one who's initiating that and starting that process. So hopefully we'll have something to, you know, very shortly we'll be able to do some reporting on that. Right, but, but, um, but um, our housing committee too, and I've been uh, meeting, uh, going to their meetings, their housing meetings, just to see, collaborate and see what we can do as a group. I wasn't aware that um, we had initiated that in our community board. I just, we just started that on our own as part of our housing initiatives. So it'd be great if um, Dante, you can, you know, let us know and, you know, if we can um, uh, contribute in any way, we'd be glad to, and, you know, moving forward. Thank you. All right, then. Um, of course. Okay. No, oh, sorry. All right. I think that was the last question I saw. Uh, that concludes my um, the chairman's report. So we were a little bit out of order. So we had already done the um, the approval of the minutes. Uh, is there any new business, any old business? Well, there's no old business because I think we've um, we had nothing tabled from any previous meetings. Is there any new business for the exec that we need to be considering? Uh, Ms. Moses, I see your hand. Yes, I don't know if it's old or new, but I just want to know what, okay, let me see if I can uh, frame this correctly. So if, if we have a person that's not attending committee meetings, but attend board meetings, according to the bylaws, are they in or are they out? Uh, they will be out. They're out? They will be out. Okay. They're required to attend both. If you're if you're a board member, you are required to attend, have satisfactory attendance for both. Oh, okay. Thanks. So that's part of the reason why we're looking at both of them as well. So it's like, you know, if if people are are, are messed up on both sides, those are conversations we need to have. No, I'm not saying processes. I'm saying I'm not saying messed up on both sides. I'm saying that they just don't attend committee meetings, but they always attend board meetings. That's my that, that's no, that's saying. still a problem. That's still a problem. They're out of compliance. Oh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Uh, okay, Debbie and Kyrie. So I just want to add to Pat Moses. Um, I mean, if 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 attendance is a key component of being of serving on the community board, um, you know, I don't understand why this is an issue. I mean, if people are not complying with the city charter which is mandated, I mean, I, I don't understand. I don't understand if, 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 if you're committed to doing something or, you know, what is your issue? If, if you have an issue, then maybe you need to step aside and allow someone else to fulfill that role, which, you know, they would comply with. Um, 
you know, but if attendance is a key issue, then, you know, this is what you act on. And I mean, again, if everyone is sending in their monthly uh, reports from their meetings, um, there should be a spreadsheet again, where someone from the board office who's doing reviewing these uh, minutes, you know, would note that this person was absent. I mean, I, 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 I have my own setup and this is what I forward to the board when I have to, um, but there should be a key component you know, handled by the board office where, you know, this information is being, you know, listed each month, you know, of the people that's in attendance. And, you know, this is what we use as, you know, part of the charter mandated um, information about being a community board member. So, you know, that's what no, I want to put out and the there. No, no, the district office is actually creating that document where it's like, yes, we're tracking that on, on a monthly basis. Um, so for the, just to talk about it very quickly on the committee level and well, the committee and the board, we're tracking all of that, but you know what? The chairs will see it first. Uh, and this is the reason why I want to say for all the chairs, you are fully empowered. If you already see the problem, cause you'll see it before anybody else does. If you see the issue and then they, they truly have decided they don't want to show up, let us know. And, and, you know, and again, it's just an email to me saying that they've missed X amount of meetings and you would like to have them removed. I respond back. In concurrence, yes, they are removed from your committee. And then from there, whatever other conversations, if it's a community member, they're out. If it's a board member, additional conversations have to happen because all board members have to serve on a committee. But again, if, if that is the case, then when, when members are being appointed to the community board, whichever community board it is, Mm -hmm. I think that um, the chair of the uh, board should have input in terms of, you know, the attendance of those individuals. I mean, that, that's I've something seen I it have. happen before. It's and, one of those um, things. Um, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. It's one of those things. Actual input on who gets on the board is something that Borough Hall has been very funny about in terms of, I think it was even a conversation we had at the borough board meeting where before you do the reappointments, we said the chair should see that because we would have knowledge. There's some pushback with respect to that in terms of they don't really wanna let us know. But the one thing I can share is that they're probably in the next month or so, they are going to request the attendance records from the board. And guess what? The records are gonna tell, you know, the, the, the records will tell, they will tell the tale. And, and we'll be blunt, there will be some members who are not coming back tell you right now just from the numbers i've seen already there are members who will not be coming back um but this is the reason why we continue to beat the drum in terms of listen you know we try and do it early we try and do the orientations when people come we ask you to come to two meetings a month we really try and be reasonable about the, the that, that expectation but we need people to take it you know seriously as well but um but just to finish again committee chairs if you haven't done so already send me the email with the names of the people you need out they'll be off the committees the board, um, if they're absent from board meetings, that's a process that's going to be starting very shortly. You know, we give a little bit of leeway in those first couple of months only because schedules change constantly uh, and you don't see a pattern until about three or four months in, in terms of unless somebody hasn't been here all year, you won't see it. But around the third or four month, this is where we actually see the issues and we can start taking actions. So we're at that stage right now. Kyrie. Kyrie, yes. Hello, everyone. Yes. So I just wanted to say I do, too, agree with um, what Debbie was just saying and even what the chair was just sharing with us as well. However, I do want to, again, speak for myself. Like today, this is the only time, like today, I got on late today. I was so upset and I couldn't stay as long as stretched out because I've had for the last two months um, this evening planned. And with that being said, so this meeting started originally at seven o'clock. A lot of times we carry on until 10, 30, 11 o'clock. I understand that if we, it's only once a week, every second week of the month, we need to come. However, if we start something at seven o'clock, we have a whole, a whole entire agenda, people. We haven't even voted. I am a member of the executive committee as are you, Linda, Fred, everyone else some of us and we haven't even voted a lot of times and this is something that i brought up before 
we wait for the voting items to go all the way until the end, which is 1030 when you say we have no quorum or not enough people are here. But we have to keep in mind it's 7 p.m. on a Tuesday evening. It's currently, and because of the sentiments that came up, I can't remember which chair, I believe it was you, Beverly. Good night to you tonight. Um, you were expressing about involvement and everyone being uh, members who are elected. I do agree with this. This thus why I stayed extra. I've made a call to extend my time here, but this is running long, longer than anticipated. And we still have yet to vote on the key issues identified on the agenda. Also, I wanted to say to you, Debbie, the office does send out an update uh, for all of the executive committee members reports. And, you know, we do have that in email. I know they send it a lot, but thus, this is why I feel so comfortable saying, okay, are we going to vote? Are we going to talk about this? Because I've spent those two to three hours reviewing all of those documents as well. So I just wanted to put that out there and speak for other members just like me that potentially may have something to do, including you, Fred and or Linda, who honestly, they never complain or never say anything. They're here throughout their entire time. So thank you. That's all I wanted to say. I got on camera because I'm currently at dinner. But you know, my community means the most to me. So thank you. Thank you for the comment. Okay. Um, all right. So that was the last comment that we have for the evening. Um, yeah. So we have now completed our agenda. So there is no other new business. Uh, we've addressed the other points. So the only thing I'll remind everyone is remember, we have an adjusted schedule this month. We are meeting again on Thursday. So Thursday, the 15th, we are meeting for our general board meeting. Please make sure we come. Um, it's, it shouldn't be a heavy agenda. I think we have the two SLA applications. We have the conversation for the, that, that vote. Um, but the key is gonna be one, make sure we come, we come on time, we handle the business, we do what we need to do, read the minutes, read the documentation in advance because that will answer most of your questions. And again, uh, we don't wanna necessarily get into conversations that are committee work. Um, a question or two is fine. But otherwise, we need to move the agenda. Uh, we're going to be working very um, diligently over the next few months to make sure that we're getting, you know, we're getting much better about this. Um, so again, make sure we show up on time. Make sure we're coming in. Um, and with that being said, uh, everyone enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you for for staying on. Thanks for helping us get through the agenda. We'll see you on Thursday, 7 p.m. Uh, at this time, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. Oh, hold on, before you do that, Ms. Watson Lord, do you have Mr. Albanor on the as um as attending? I was gonna yeah. say so move. Okay, well, we got you now then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Put me on the right, time he arrived. <laughs> okay, move second. Do I have a second? Hey, you don't even see a second. Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. Move right. Second by me. Okay, all those in favor of, or any objection to, a, to adjournment? That was in order. Nope, hearing none, we stand adjourned. Time is now 9, 13 p.m. Everyone, see you in two days. In two days, yes. Okay. Oh my God, I want to.